Well, I have 1.5 million Kenyan shillings, eh? and by the way, that is my savings after living in Qatar for quite a long time, and I'm back home, and I'm contemplating between, should I go ahead and build myself a home, or should I go ahead and invest the money? And let me tell you one secret. That is a question that I was actually posed on to me by one of my clients. And obviously, with their consent, they told me share the information. And again, I'm here to actually solve. Maybe you are facing such kind of a challenge. Now, what do you do? Should you go ahead and build your house or should you invest the money first? And the guy told me I am 34 years old. Old. Now, what's the best decision I should take? Hey, I'm no longer in Qatar. I'm back at home. Now, what should I do? Okay. Now, this is a very good and nice question. And I know one thing, probably at the end of this video, you might be like, hey, you know why? Because when we talk about, when we talk about issues to do with building a home, it's quite a very emotive issue. You know why? I know you love to have your home. I do love to have my own home. Nobody loves to be, you know, pay the rent and what have you. It's everyone's dream to have their place where they can call a home. Now, the question is this, what is the best decision for this individual? This is the only saving, is the ultimate saving that he has in his account and he don't won't miss this amount of money. Before I actually go to that point, there are two things that I want to actually explain to you vividly so that by the time you're making a decision or by the time you're ending this video, you already know what you should go for. All right. This is what you're supposed to know. Number one, there is something called an asset. All right. There's something called an asset. And another thing that is something called a what? A liability. All right. A liability. And the other thing is called what? A cash flow. All right. Cash flow. Before you think of doing anything with your money, these are the three things that you're supposed to all the time consider before making any decision. This guy has 1.5 million Kenyan shillings, okay? Let's take an example. If this guy decides to go up out there and build his home, obviously he can't be able to build a dream house. You cannot be able to come up with a dream house with this amount of money. So the guy probably will show up somewhere whereby he'll buy maybe, let's say, a plot of land, let's say, at around... 500, 600, and by the way, when you buy that, that particular amount of money, it's quite interior. This is quite an interior place, all right? So it means this guy, if he decides to go and get maybe a plot worth, let's say, 700 Kenya, 700,000, all right? 700K. So that guy is left with what? 800, 800K. So this amount of money is left behind. It's the only money that can actually maybe build him, maybe let's say, two bedroom, maybe two bedroom house, a small, a slope, a very simple two bedroom somewhere. All right, that's the amount of money that it is enough to build. Maybe two or maybe let's say two bedroom and something outside there, maybe washing area or something of sort. Anyway, in short, I'm trying to say this. This amount of money cannot actually be able to build this kind of an individual. A what? A dream house. But anyway, he wants to have a house and he getting, he's getting confused. What exactly can you do? This is what I'll tell you. And remember one thing, the guy is 34 years. Now, the question is this. At this age, should you focus on actually, because, let me tell you one secret, there are two things that you're supposed to know. There are two things that you're supposed to know when it comes to money. And that thing, number one, you're supposed to know, the A, you either store money, you either store money, all right, or B, you do what? You grow, grow money. You grow what? You grow money. So when you build your house, when you buy a piece of land and build your house, a lot of people tend to think that this is an asset. It's kind of an asset, yes, I don't deny. But what I appreciate in that specific place, it's only the land. Only land is the one that I appreciate. The structure does not appreciate. Actually, if you decide to sell that piece of property, that structure that you have there, it's a nuisance. It's not probably what I want to have in my, my, my piece of land and something of sort. Probably I'll bring down that structure. So structure does not appreciate in price, but the land does. And the land appreciates at a rate of 7 to 10% in, in, in an year in our country unless a crazy thing happens in that area where there is a construction of a road or something of so the point is this if you decide to build a house you're actually doing what you're storing you're storing the money that is to store the money the money is not growing nothing is happening and you do not have a cash flow or what you're doing is to store the money now at this particular age of 34 years are you supposed to focus on storing the money or growing the money remember this is the only amount of money that you have all right. And remember one thing in this life, you need two things. You need to have an asset. All right. And also you need to have what? A cash flow. And I always say this, you cannot be able to, you cannot shop in a supermarket with a title deed. You can't be able to do that. You need cash flow. As much as you're going to build yourself a house, you also need to have something that can be generating new income. I'm going to give you two scenarios that if I was me, I would pick. All right. Scenario number one, 
I will decide. First of all, at this age, I wouldn't focus on storing the money. Or what I'll put in consideration is making sure that I don't lose the money. All right, because we say rule number one, don't lose your money. All right. So the focus number one that I will have when I'm 34 years old, I'll focus on doing what? On growing, growing the money. Because at the end of the day, love it or hate it, the fact remains building a house, it's never an investment. That is actually sort of a quote unquote a dead capital. That area does not generate you anything. Actually, it's a cash flow. Why? You need to pay all the land rates, you need to do what we call the electricity and what have you. I mean, like seriously, that thing, don't view it from a point of an asset. View it from a point of a what? Just a convenience. Just view it from a point of convenience. First of all, at this age, I focus on growing the money. But how would I do it? Two things. It's either I decide to take a huge chunk of my money, some part of it. I have 1.5 million Kenyan shillings, all right? I have 1.5 million Kenyan shillings. This is what I will do. I may decide to take the 500,000 Kenyan shillings. I take the 1 million because I don't want to mess up. I take the 1 million. I can put it in treasury bills, treasury bills or treasury bonds or both of them. And maybe it's giving me at a rate of around 13%, 13% after tax. Some even give you 14% after tax. So meaning at the end of the year, out of 1 million, you get yourself 140,000 at the end of the year. That's a good amount of money, honestly. I take the 1 million, put it on the treasury bills or the treasury bonds because I don't want to rush into making a decision with this amount of money. I remain with the 500. Now, out of these 500,000 Kenyan shillings, I don't have any problem with me renting first. What you do is this, maybe you calculate the amount of money that you're renting in that specific place. You can decide and check and see, hey, guess what? Maybe I'm paying my house rent at around 15,000. So 15,000 times 12, decide how much that will give you. That's maybe around a certain amount of money. Now, that's not a problem with you renting. What you do is this, take the 500,000 Kenyan shillings. You go start a what? Start a business, all right? Start a business. But again, here you need to be very careful and keen. You have to start a something that either you have an experience on, either you have an expertise on, or maybe you want to start a something that you're passionate about. But go beyond that and check what the society or the ground is actually dictating to you. Because at the end of the day, you're looking forward into investing this money and growing this amount of money. Remember one thing, we have one million in the bank, whereby, not really in the bank, brother, but in the treasury bills, where it giving you a rate of 14%, which is 140,000 at the end of the year. That would be amazing. And again, you check they take the 500,000 Kenyan shillings. Get your rent out of this. You can decide to set aside a rent for the next six months out of their 500,000 Kenyan shillings. Such that you know for the next six months, by the time you're now checking out how your business is faring up, you do not have something that is actually disturbing you here and there. You may decide to actually put this money into either one or two businesses. And remember one thing, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You may decide to start a business A and a business B. Then keep on monitoring those businesses. You can decide to take a business maybe worth like um, 150,000 and another one maybe 100,000 that is 250,000 okay you start business A and business B you can decide that business that you know can resonate well with where you come from because hey remember one thing at this particular age you're still a youth you're still a young guy and we always say try as many things as you can remember one thing I always say what at from 20 to 30 Try many things as you can. From 30 to 40, learn from somebody, all right, and acquire some skills. From 40 to 50, do that what you understand. From 50 and above, inspire somebody, and above 60, let people, uh, let other people do the thing. Now, the point is this, at this particular age, obviously, I don't want you to lose your money. Put a million bob in your treasury bills or treasury bond. Take the 500,000 Kenyan shillings, set aside a rent worth for five or, five or six months aside, and then the remaining, start yourself an investment. Then check how the investment is actually taking you through so that you better decide hey once the treasury bill actually matures and you get your face value back you can be able to get some money and be able to channel back to investment and you proceed to the next level all right that is option a or that is scenario a scenario b you may decide you have 1.5 million kenyan shillings you take the 1.5 million kenyan shilling and decide to invest on the real estate whereby meaning like you go buy a piece of land somewhere and obviously that would make you or get you a quite a huge amount of uh, i mean a quite a you know sort of a well presented place maybe a quite an interior you get yourself maybe a piece of land going for maybe let's say 700 kenyan thousand uh, 700 thousand kenyan shillings now you're remaining with 800 000. now with 800,000 decide to either build two things two properties there build your one bedroom house 
or you can build build one bedroom and a two bedroom i don't know how you can be able to squeeze this amount of money because we say approximate the amount of money that you need to build a, like a one bedroom it's around 450 to 500 sometimes 600 depends on where you're building your house from so if you can decide to actually go ahead and may say build maybe our bed sitter or maybe build one bedroom two the, two of them you give them maybe so 400 400 and then you live in one bedroom and then you rent the other maybe let's say at 5000 or 6000 or 7000 again i said where you get this piece of land obviously you won't get it in a quite a you know a, a fancy place or something of sort now the 5000 or the 6000 that you're getting at the end of the year you can channel it at towards paying you the liabilities like the electricity the water and what have you again at the end of the day you have constricted your cash flow your cash flow is quite low then that means that you need to also get yourself back to the uh, you know to the to, to the you know um, um, uh, grinding and hustling out there because you do not have money that you can start a business with for me i would prefer actually getting my 1.5 million into a treasury bill if i get 140000 kenyan shillings and i get myself a quite a sizable amount of money that actually 1 million kenyan shilling is enough to pay me the rent true is enough to pay me the rent all right and then the 500 kenyan shillings then i can use it to invest on my businesses and grow myself and that way guess what i have it's like i have an asset which is a virtual one on the treasury bills or the bonds or the money market fund okay or maybe you can get into the circle where you are getting the dividends and then from there you can be able now to invest on this thing because what you need or what you do not have right now you do not have a cash flow and you really need to have a cash flow so it's always good to make sure that you see sometimes i usually get people with this amount of money they go buy a piece of land and then they build like a makeshift sort of a house and then they're okay they're not paying rent that's amazing but they do not have cash you go back to the same same struggle that you are in when you're trying to look for this money. Whoever told you that building a home is the ultimate goal, ultimate thing that you have to have it in life, sometimes it's good to be keen. Sometimes I prefer, if I have a good amount of money, I prefer buy an asset in terms of a land and keep it somewhere and also remain with a certain percentage of money and be able to invest it so that at least I can have somewhere that is generating me income. Don't ever forget that cash flow is very important because at the end of the day, you actually survive on the cash flow. You can never shop with a title deed in a supermarket. That's true. It's good to mix up that thing. And the moment, now what you do is that the, man, the money that you're getting out of the treasury based on the bonds, and the business that you're actually running now you can be able to acquire a piece of property at a slow pace and you can give yourself at a period of six years six years meaning by the time like you're hitting 40 years at that particular point you already know hey in six years time if i invest this money if you put that uh, one million in the six years time so you can take 140 times six you obviously realize that you'll get yourself a good amount of money assuming that you'll never withdraw that money from the treasury bill you may do so in between after realizing that the business that you're running requires more capital for you to actually grow yourself to the next level. Amazing. That's how you do it. Or you can decide never withdraw the 1.4 or rather never withdraw the 1 million, but be channeling back that what you get from the 1.4 or rather from the 1 million, which is 140 Gs. You pump it to your business. You grow yourself. Guess what you're doing? You're having the business. You have your million bob somewhere secured and you have the cash flow. You kind of have an asset uh, which is virtual. And then you can now focus on buying yourself a what? A piece of land. Be it either cash or you can do so at a loan and be servicing that specific loan out of the profit that you're getting from the businesses i mean come on guys this thing you need to actually go ahead and have the mathematics right with you otherwise if you just rush because you have that uh, zeal you're listening to people you know the old uh, community or the old guys who are telling you hey land is the ultimate thing you're building your house and all those kind of things you might actually constrict your cash flow and get yourself into problems Guess what? You can always get a conversation with me. How do you do so? Grab my number from the description of this specific video. Give me a call or text me and we can have a conversation. All right. And again, I do have booklets about investments like that what I've talked about, about treasury bills. I have it has all the information on how you can get started with the treasury bills. All right. That copy goes for only 280. And by the way, don't forget this. I always post a video each and every day talking about investments and anything related to exactly that. So if you don't want to miss any of my good videos, do this. It doesn't cost you anything and it's free of charge. All right. Down below on your right, there is a small button written subscribe. Hit that magical button, turn that notification bell and like this video. And by only doing that, YouTube will notify you whenever I upload a new good video. For now, it's a goodbye. See ya.